Sorry. Sorry. So good morning everyone. Um, so um, as most of you saw on the prayer, re um, prayer request group earlier this week, um, we've had quite an interesting week getting ready for this happy press. It's been a quite an interesting one. So um, I don't want to say too much, I'm trying to still formulate. Um, but yeah, definitely feel like there's been some sabotage in trying to get this message out. You know when you feel like God's really speaking and then all the things happen so that you basically can't do what God's told you to do. Well, it's been one of those weeks a little bit, hasn't it, Bex? And poor Rebecca, <laughs> I think she thought she'd got away with it in Uganda, just being like, right, I've done my bit now. I've stood up and I've preached my messages and now I don't need to do it again. Um, and then she suggested that this is what I should preach on. When she knew I was preaching on Sunday, she went, well, I think you need to preach on that thing that happened when we were in Uganda. And I was like, oh yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, I probably should do that. And the more I thought about it, the more I was like, but I only have half the sermon. And this will become apparent as we explain to you um, during the morning. And so on Tuesday morning when Bex and I, well, we both arrived at work, we were both on the early shift, and I arrived myself. Bex, I think you're right, I do need to preach on Merton Falls, which you can see here, which is a place we visited when we were on safari. And you think, well, why are you preaching about a waterfall? It'll all become clear, hopefully. Um, I said, I'm, I think you're right. I do think that's what we're supposed to speak about. But the Dowson is only have half the sermon and you have the other half, don't you? And she looked at me, she was like, and I could see the, like, the ground sort of opening up and wanting to swallow. And she was like, yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> and I was like, so guess what? I think we need to tag team preach. So we have done, we did this a lot in Uganda where we either took, we did it once where we took um, a section of Thessalonians and we all preached on different verses. So the five of us in the team preached different sections. Um, we did a lot where a couple of us would preach. We did a whole teaching session where I did most of it and Bex did a huge chunk of it in the middle. So we've done this a lot, but obviously we've never done it here. So please, do, please bear with us if it seems a little disjointed because obviously we had an awful lot of technical issues which did not help. We were supposed to have plenty of time on Thursday afternoon to do it, and that was completely scuppered. So by the end of Thursday, we've basically done nothing. Um, so um, if it comes a little disjointed, we do apologise, but I'm just going to pray that the Holy Spirit moves and the Holy Spirit speaks, and the word that we believe he's given us to speak um, is going to go forth. So Lord God, we just thank you for this opportunity that we have to come together today. And Lord God, we do believe that you have spoken through the power of your Holy Spirit, that you spoke very clearly to um, all of us when we were at Murchison Falls. And Lord God, I just ask right now that Rebecca and I will be able to communicate that clearly, that we will um, hear clearly from your Holy Spirit and he will lead every single one of our steps, every word that we speak. And we pray that everybody's heart and mind will be open to receive all that you have for us today, Lord God. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. And I bind any deem of technology that seems to be over everything right now. <laughs> um, and so you have no power here and everything will work. Amen. 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 Okay, so that's a bit of a weird way to start a sermon, but I'm going to go with it. Right, we're actually going to start with a video. And it's, okay, so well, let me just check the volume because I realise. If I turn the volume down. And it, when they had the water 
roads and they're washed out. And there's over in that flat area there, there used to be a, a big rock that people could go out and see the balls from, but now obviously you wouldn't want to do that. Okay. So that is Murchison Falls. And one thing, I've never been so pleased that phones have the technology they do now that we were actually able to catch it. Because usually in these circumstances, you can't capture the power of something like that in quite the same way. But when I rewatch this video, I can almost, I hope you felt the same, that you can almost feel it. Um, and that's what happened. We basically came around this clearing from like walking through all this undergrowth sort of path. And it cleared out and it was just, I mean, the noise, you could hear it for a really long way. And then you came around the corner and it just got louder and louder and louder and louder. And the closer you got, you could actually feel the ground moving. It was like, it kind of, it was so loud and so powerful. It kind of shook your body. And so you could literally feel it all the way through your body. Um, so why are we talking about this? Well, let me tell you a little bit more about Murchison Falls. This isn't a history lesson. This isn't a geography lesson, but it's important you understand this. So Murchison Falls is also known as Cabalega Falls. And it's a waterfall at the apex of Lake Albert on the Victoria Nile in Uganda. At the top of Murchison Falls, where that video was, so this picture is taken from the bottom, which we saw the day before on our boat cruise. And so that is as close as we could get. And that's zoomed in because the power of the water coming down the waterfall is too much for the big, we were in quite a large, um, there was probably what, about 60 people in the boat probably. Um, there was a few smaller boats that could fit about 10 people on them. They were more like speedboat style and they could get a little bit closer but coming in at the sides because um, we could see them going a little bit further. But the bigger boat that we were in couldn't get any closer because the tidal effect that it had and the sort of the, the sort of swirling of the water, the whirlpools effect, you can't really see it here. It was quite hard to capture, but uh, it was so forceful you couldn't get any closer. At the, so at the top of Medicine Fall, Falls, the Nile forces its way through a gap in the rocks, which is only seven metres or 23 feet wide. And it tumbles... 43 metres, which is 141 feet, for those of you working the old school, before flowing westward into Lake Albert. The outlet of Lake Victoria sends around 300 metres, I don't know, 11,000 cubic feet worth of water over the falls, squeezed into a gorge less than 10 metres or 33 feet wide. So Murchison Falls is known as one of the most powerful waterfalls in the world. Certainly not the biggest, because clearly Niagara Falls and all these other ones are much wider and bigger. So more water passes over them. But what is so phenomenal and powerful about this one is, is that this massive amount of water passes through a very, very, very narrow gap. And so that's why it's so forceful and it was, I mean, I love water. I love waterfalls. Absolutely adore them. And I love the sound of water. But I will say I was slightly terrified. Because you could, you were so aware of the power of it that it was quite scary. And it's very rare. I know some people look at a body of water like that and immediately get terrified. Dad's being one of them. <laughs> he doesn't really like, he can't swim very well. He doesn't really like that concept. So he doesn't love that. Loves the sound of them, loves looking at them from a safe place. But it was very overwhelming. The park that this is located is called Murchison Falls National Park. So clearly the falls are popular enough and such a, a, a key part. And considering how ginormous the park is, like you can drive for hours and hours and have no idea the falls are even there. We did the day before. But they are, it's obviously created the name of it. So it's bisected, that park is bisected by the Victoria Nile which plunges 45 metres over the remnant rift valley wall, creating the dramatic Murchison Falls. It's the centrepiece of the park and the final event in an 80 kilometre stretch of rapids. So these rapids that you just saw in the video go for 80 kilometres and presumably get more and more forceful as you go down them. The mighty cascade drains the last of the river's energy, transforming it into a broad, placid stream that flows quietly across the Rift Valley floor, 
into Lake Albert. And that was the bit that we took our boat cruise on. And we were just cruising <coughs> along on a nice little boat, looking at all these giant hippos and crocodiles and elephants and all these sorts of things, because they were all on the edges. And it just feels like, it always feels like a big lake. And we weren't even in Lake Albert, we were still on the Nile. So we actually sent a picture at one point to mum and dad and they were like, oh, which lake is that? And we were like, no, that's not the lake, that's the river. <laughs> but it just, it's so vast, it looks like a lake. And then I saw this and I was not able to verify it, but I did find it. it says the falls, the Acholi tribe, which is one of the main tribal groups in Uganda, call it Wang Jok, which translates to the eye of God, which I thought was fascinating. The manifestation of God was another name, and it was given um, the Merchants and Falls name in 1864 by the explorer Sir Samuel Baker in honour of Sir Roderick Murchison, a president of the Royal Geographical Society. So it was named by British explorers when they found it. So Merchants and Falls is not the biggest waterfall in the world, but it is said to be the most powerful due to the force and the volume of the water passing through such a small space. And it's very common to feel the ground vibrate and shake due to the force of the water passing by. There was so much symbolism that we saw in this, and God actually spoke to each one of us as we were at the falls. I mean, so bear in mind, we're on our three days in the middle, we're on our safari, and this is the last morning. So we set off relatively early, we're driving away, and we're like, we're just going to the top of the falls, and we're like, this is going to be great. And we'd all seen a documentary and some videos and pictures of the top of the falls. And none of us were ready for what we saw. We thought we understood the power of it, but none of us could quite put into words the power um, and the strength of what we witnessed. It was really quite astounding. And so God started speaking to all of us. And first it was Susie turned to me and said, it's just making me think about this and I need to write a blog post. So Susie's a Christian counselor. Um, and she does a lot of counselling and so she was thinking oh it's this blog post about this and this and it's so good and I was like yeah and then Todd said I just can't help but think about the power of the Holy Spirit when I stand here and I was like it's so true and we all were like yeah absolutely and then God spoke to me about a couple of things which we were talking about this morning and then I said that to Rebecca and we were both talking she was like and then there's this bit and then there's this bit, and then there's this bit. So this is the sermon that you're going to get, is the this bit. <laughs> um, so as I said, I'm a huge fan of water. I love the sound of waterfalls and the sound of rushing water. It's one of my favourite sounds. But it was really quite scary. And there's a video that we've got, actually, where you can actually see me. I'm taking a video, and it is a little bit rocky underfoot, but I'm walking really tentatively, and it looks like I'm probably walking tentatively because of the rocks I'm on. But I'm actually walking tentatively towards the barrier because I just felt like it was too dangerous. It was, I can't really kind of, I'm hoping I can explain it well. It was almost like it was so powerful, you felt like at any moment you could kind of get sucked into it. Which I know sounds ridiculous because clearly there's barriers. I mean, I will say there wasn't a ton of barriers. African health and safety is clearly not British health and safety. There was a few things that says do not go on the grass and the rocks and they were already underwater. And you're like, well, obviously I'm not going to step on that. Um, but that's when um, our guide had told us that actually, you know, historically there was a bridge and that for a season there was a big rock you could stand on and people used to go and stand on it. And I'm looking at it going, are you joking? Are these people crazy? And normally I'm the girl that's like, if there's a big wave at the beach, I'm like, get me by the wave! Like, I've got how many stories of times we used to go to beaches in South Wales where mum and dad literally started packing me a change of clothes because if there was water anywhere, I'd be drowned from head to foot, fully clothed in the middle of winter because I'd run in and out of the waves. Like, that was me. I love it. But I was, it was actually quite terrifying because it almost felt like at any moment I was going to be in that water and I was gone. Because if you fell in, I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't survive which is going to sound a little bit weird when we then say this is like the power of the Holy Spirit. But it was scary because it was so powerful. And what it reminded me of is actually, it's the power of God. But the only difference is, when it's the power of God, we don't need to be afraid of it. Because what that showed me is, actually, however powerful that waterfall, God is more powerful than that. Because God is all-powerful. He's omnipotent. He is all powerful. All power belongs to God. All 
all of it. And so the gravity of that waterfall is just like dipping your toe in the power of God. And suddenly when I think about the power of God, I'm not scared. I'm not scared of the power of God. I'm not scared of God. I'm not scared of what he is able to do. You know, in fact, that actually brings me peace. That brings me calm. And so suddenly, if you make that about the waterfall, the thought of them going in that waterfall is actually like, a bit like, woo, all right, strap in, let's go. Let's just not think about the rocks under the water where I might bang my ass. But clearly, if you go down with God, you'd be fine, right? The one thing that we were really struck by is there was nothing that was going to stop that water. Nothing. And there had been a bridge. But instead of the bridge, you know, creating some kind of barrier, no, no, the bridge got washed away. I can guarantee you absolutely nothing was going to stop the power of that water. This is where you can see, this is the edge of the waterfall here, going over. This bit here is a large rock, so obviously it's sort of breaking the water slightly, but it's still forging away through it wherever. And you can look down here, there's some smaller waterfalls which we'll talk about in a few minutes. But this all here is spray. This is a huge, huge ravine. You cannot see the bottom of it. Half the time you can't see it at all. The spray was so powerful that at times, I've got multiple photos, at one point I stood in the same place and just kept clicking, because half the time you couldn't see the other side of the waterfall. Like, I couldn't see this part, because the spray alone was so much and so powerful that you couldn't see the other side. Nothing can stop that water going down, and in the same way, nothing can stop the power of God. The power of God is moving no matter what. The power of God is happening, it is available to all of us. The flow of the Holy Spirit is one of the manifestations of the power of God. And again, that's available to all of us, all of the time. The Holy Spirit is moving, the Holy Spirit is acting, the Holy Spirit is speaking, the Holy Spirit is present. But what we can do is we can stop the flow of the Holy Spirit. It's happening, but you can stand away from it. You can go, you know what, I'm going to stand right here, safely, on the ground, where my feet are firmly placed, and where I'm safe and secure. You can dip your toe in at the edge. You can go a little bit closer. And Bex is going to talk a little bit more. She's like, don't you dare talk about my <laughs> Bess is going to talk a bit more about this in a moment. But there are multiple ways you can get involved. But then there is this free flow of the Holy Spirit. This is what Todd said. That water symbolises the free flowing power of the Holy Spirit. And if we choose to, we can free flow with the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's the safest place you will ever be. It is the safest place where you will ever be. Because the Holy Spirit and the power of God knows what is best for our lives way better than we could ever know. The plan God has for my life is way better than anything I could ever come up with. I cannot make a better plan. I can't make a better decision. So the best place and the safest place I can be is free flowing with the Holy Spirit. And yeah, there's a moment where it's terrifying because your legs go out from under you and you go whoop down the waterfall. But you know what? It's going to, you don't go woof because you don't turn into a dog, but whoosh. <laughs> you might go woof. You might think, you know what noise would come out of you if you went down that waterfall. But anyway. So my question is are you free flowing with the Holy Spirit? Are you watching from the sidelines and expecting different results? You might be watching the sidelines and aware that other people are free-flowing in the Holy Spirit. And you think, well, maybe if I just watch them, then somehow vicariously it'll pass to me. And my, my circumstances and my, my view will look different. But I'm just going to stand here over here where it's a little bit safer. But I'm watching what they're doing over there. And that looks great. 
And I'm really excited about that, but I'm just going to stay right here. You can't watch from the sidelines and expect it to look different. You have to get in. This is not something you can pick up vicariously. You can only watch. Are you too scared to jump in? Are you holding back from the power of the Holy Spirit? Are you stopping the power of the Holy Spirit in your own life? We all have moments where we do it. Of course we do. We all have moments where we go, you know what, actually, that's too much. The song Oceans that we sung earlier always reminds me, and I feel like I've shared this before, so apologies if you're just hearing a rerun, of a time in California when we were about to move, we were getting ready to move here, and we needed to pay $8,000 to move our shipping container to bring our stuff over. At this point, Todd and I earned 8000 well, the year before we'd earned $16,000 in a year. That gives you a kind of scale of what that was like. We were $1,000 in debt. We had credit card debt at that point. And we had like no additional money. And obviously we're still living our life. We're still having to pay rent. We're still having to pay our bills. And we needed to say, we needed to sign a contract with a shipping company to say, we will hand you $8,000 the day we come and load the thing, the vehicle. And that was four weeks out. And I remember sitting in the car, sobbing, going, I can't do that. I don't have faith for that. I have faith for a lot of things, God, but I don't have faith for eight grand because I realised I'd reached the limit of what I thought the Holy Spirit could do. And so essentially in that moment, I was going, that's the limit. I don't believe that you are capable of doing that. And I just remember starting crying because I was like, I've just limited God. But I was like, I just don't have the faith for that. And then oceans came on. Why does that always happen? Oh, because, oh, maybe because the Holy Spirit's in control. Oceans came on, and I was sobbing, because the lyric goes, take me deeper than my faith. What is it? Take me deeper. I'm going to get the lyrics wrong. Where well, my faith can be made stronger. Yes. My faith will be made stronger. There it is. Thank you. I've just been singing it. How long have we seen it for? So, when my, take me deeper where my feet cannot wander, where my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Saviour. And God really spoke to me that actually I needed him to get me to that point. And he did. We signed a contract and we paid the money the day the shipping container turned up. I don't know how we did it. I don't know how it happened, but it did. And since then, I have seen God increase my faith in many, many ways. And I realised in that moment, and I've said this many times as well, that when we sing that song, Oceans, it's a dangerous song to sing. Do not sing that song lightly, because you've just sung, take me deeper than my feet can wander, where my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Saviour. It is a dangerous song to sing, because God's a God of his word, and if you sing that, and you sing it, and you mean it, I guarantee you he will take you there, and it will be amazing. And it'll be a wild ride. And it'll be the best ride of your life. Because he's going to take you where your feet wouldn't go. And he's done it with me. He's doing it right now. I'm preaching a sermon I haven't written word for word. He spoke that before we went to Uganda. He said, I'm actually not going to give you anything in advance, Ruth. I'm going to tell you just before you need to stand up. And he did it every time. And it was terrifying. On the last night, Tom and I stood in front of a crusade, and Bex can testify, we were sharing room with Bex at this point, she saw we had about 20 minutes to compare notes. Todd had three scriptures that God gave him. He read them to me, I was like, well, that means nothing. I have no idea. And then we literally arrived at the crusade, a little bit of worship happened. You can't talk over worship in Africa, by the way, because you can't hear yourself think. And then we go up on the stage, and Todd starts speaking, and I'm stood next to him with a microphone going, okay, God be really good if you give me something to say and he totally did and this isn't to like pat myself on the back and go oh Ruth aren't you great it's to show you that if we say these things if we go in the wild ride of the Holy Spirit he takes us on a journey that we don't expect and it's terrifying at times 
But man, it's amazing when he follows through. It's amazing when you go, oh, actually, I see what you're doing there, God. You did everything you promised you did. You didn't let me stand up there like a complete muppet. I'm going all over the place here right now. One scripture that came to mind was Psalm 42, 7. And in the Amplified it says, Roaring deep calls to roaring deep at the thunder of your waterfalls. All your breakers and your rolling waves have gone over me. It's not on there, don't worry. <laughs> it's the one scripture I forgot to put my own PowerPoint in. That really good. And we, sometimes this version is deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. So clearly you can't stand at Murchison Falls and literally hear the roar and the thunder of the waterfalls without thinking about it. But when you read that psalm, it's actually a cry from the depths. It's a crying out for God to move in a situation that's really desperate and full of despair. And then I found this, it was on Got Questions, it says, We hit upon the meaning of deep calls to deep when we recognise that our human needs are great, but the riches of God are greater. And when I read that, I thought, this is exactly what the waterfall demonstrated to us. Our wisdom is shallow, but his knowledge and judgments are unsearchable. God's thoughts are deep. His love is as deep as the immense heart, as he proved when he gave his only begotten son to die for us. The height, breadth and depth of God's resources are without measure. From the depth of his despair, the psalmist found help in the depth of God's goodness. And he was able to say in conclusion, why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my saviour and my God. And that's something really important to remember. If you're in the depths of despair, if you are desperate for God to move, if you're desperate for to see change, if you want things to be different, cry out to God because deep calls to deep. His resources are greater than ours. Get on that waterfall. Get on the wild ride. Free flow with the Holy Spirit because he will meet every need. He will meet you in the pit of your despair and he will lift you up. Because he is our hope. And when we go hand over to Betsy, she's going to talk about rainbows. Okay, we've got another video, it's going to be loud. showing the entire of the waterfall that how after all the chaos and all the power of the waterfall right at the end was the rainbow and that was not something I expected to see when we were there but when they said we're going to see a waterfall I was like great I never considered that there'd be a rainbow there and I think what came to me instantly was that it was a reminder of God's promises 
Like after, in the midst of all that chaos, in the midst of when life can feel a bit more challenging and difficult, you have to let God be in control of that was a rainbow to remind us of God's promises. Um, I think it, and, and I think that the placement is important here because it's right at the end and then it goes off into the calmer waters. Um, it's as the journey of the waterfall continues, we're reminded of the hope and grace and faithfulness and peace that comes from God for all his people. And that of the covenant that came in Genesis 9, 12, 16, where God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on earth. So the rainbow shows God's mercy and the chance he gives time and time again to start anew after a storm. We just have to keep our eyes firmly fixed on God, remembering that he is the one who holds all the power. He's omnip of his omnip I can't even say the word. He's omnipotent, that he is the one who has control and that our present and future is firmly in his hands and that his way is far better than anything we can come up with. And that is really exciting and something that we need to praise and be thankful for. So that's just a little bit on the rainbow. I've got the camera here as well. <laughs> Instead of walking wide, it's not the camera. Um, so this slide isn't a, just a way of showing me and Todd with doing a selfie. Um, but we realised when we are taking this picture, we just were like, oh, we'll start with a bit of the waterfall in the background, wouldn't that be great? And then we've been talking about um, the side waterfall. So basically, there's the big main one, and then right across from where the sort of, um, I guess, where the fenced-in areas where you can get the closest to the edge of the waterfall is, um, there is two little waterfalls that have forged their way through the rock and forged their way through the plants and the undergrowth. Now, I don't know what was there first. Obviously, I only visited for about an hour. Um, I don't know what was there first, whether the plants have come because of the water or whether the plants were there and the water forged its way through. But we zoomed in here so you can see. This actually here looks like the waterfall's coming out of a tree. It's not coming out of a tree. It's coming out of a little hole in the rock. But there is a tree right over it. And so well, the thing we're reminded about here is that the power of the Holy Spirit will find a way. The power of God will find a way. It will forge its way through. Where it couldn't, where the, the velocity of the water and where the force of that water couldn't go down the one waterfall because it's only seven metres wide, it found other little avenues to push its way through. That's how forceful it is, that nothing can stop it, nothing can hold it back. And eventually it just erodes its way through. And the other scripture that came to mind in this when we were talking about it is Jeremiah 17, 8, which we've shared before, which is, He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes, for its leaves remain green, and is not anxious in the year of drought, but it does not cease to bear fruit. And it's a reminder to all of us, we've talked about trees, we've talked about being planted and rooted quite a lot, but this is a reminder to us that those, the whole area is really lush and green. That's one of the most beautiful things about Uganda, is that even though it's a very, very hot country, it is very lush and very green because there's an awful lot of rain that happens there. Now we are there, so my mum earlier when she saw the video, she said, so does that get like less in dry season and like that's worse because it's rainy season? And we were like, no, this is the dry season. 
So I think the answer probably is yes. I would imagine it get, can get a lot worse. And I think he did say it gets a lot more powerful at certain times of the year. But this was the dry season. So that's something else to bear in mind, that we didn't see it potentially as most powerful. But it's important for us to remember that things grow where the water is. Where water is life. In the Bible throughout it, it talks about water being life-giving. Water is what feeds us. Water is what nourishes us. And so we need to be like those trees planted by water. We always need to make sure our roots go deep. This waterfall provides a steady source of water and God provides an unending strength and nourishment to those who place their trust in him. Being rooted in God's word allowed us, allows us to thrive and stay green to stay alive, to stay healthy, to stay nourished. The big wave crashing over that we can see here, the power of it, is a reminder, yes, in the free flow of the Holy Spirit, big waves can come. The circumstances of our lives don't change when we are free flow with the Holy Spirit. It doesn't mean you get on this wild ride of free frame of the Holy Spirit and then everything in your life is perfect, everything's wonderful, everything's easy, everything's simple, there's no challenges. That's not what this is about. Those things still happen. And that free flow, therefore, can be really messy. It can be really messy. It's untidy. It's not this neat package deal where we're all presented like these perfect Christians who've got it all figured out. And the key about jumping in with both feet in this scenario is you don't have to be fixed in order to jump in. I'm not standing here today going, I'm in this free flow of the Holy Spirit because I've got my life and all my ducks in a row. You know, what's that famous phrase? I've, I haven't even got my ducks in a row. Apparently my ducks are just running all over the place and there's a chicken and I don't even know where that came from. Yeah, that sort of sums up my life. But it's not about that. We don't have to have everything organized and sorted and perfect and be healed and be restored and have you know our perfect little bible study time that we do every day and this great prayer life and where there's no problems and where we deal with all of our challenges and we never get upset and we never get depressed that's not reality because life happens and we talked about that this morning the enemy tries anything to come in and sabotage but if we are free flowing in the power of the Holy Spirit, then with the all powerful God who has conquered sin, who has conquered the devil, he, the devil has no authority over any of us anymore. We are living under the authority of an all powerful God. And so we need to free flow in the Spirit with Him. We need to free flow. And I, I, can't, I can't say free flow enough. It's like that was the. The sense we all had was to jump in with both feet and don't have, you know, don't feel you have to have your life all together. God heals us. God teaches us. God restores us. God works in us as we're working it out. I've just given an example. How is God testing my faith? By having me step out and do things that are terrifying. Because I have to step out in my brokenness and in my failing and in my insecurity and feel like, what if I just stand up there like a complete idiot? And then you stand up and guess what? You don't look like, well, you might look a complete idiot, but that's, you don't look like a complete idiot because of God. Some of the dancing made me look a little bit idiotic, but that's just because I'll go for it and I'll care. But you don't look like an idiot. God doesn't leave you. God meets you in that place. God meets us in our brokenness. God uses us in our brokenness. God speaks through our brokenness. I remember what Bex talked about still waters and quiet pools. I'm just thinking, really? There's still waters and quiet pools?
the last video. about this video and we went back and looked at it was that um, as it zooms in to the quieter waters the sound changes and it gets a bit quieter um, and that was just like what it was when you stood next to the little pools of water at the side um, and as I was standing there looking over the view and noticed these like quieter calmer waters what came to mind was as if it was like a hiding place. And they were often hidden by extra trees or bushes, but not always. But it was always away from the main flow of the water of the falls. And to me, this came across as something like, when we're in our life and it's all a bit chaotic, it's all a bit full of drama and everything seems to be going a bit wrong and it's all a bit challenging and feels harder and tougher we get tempted to hide or find ourselves hiding and maybe some of you are in this place now and you find yourself trying to hide away but God still sees you and he sees us because he is where our hiding place should be God is our hiding place and we can go to him for refuge and find safety <laughs> He is the one that protects us from the trouble, and we're reminded of this in Psalm 32, 7, 10, where it says, You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the ways you should go. I will counsel you with, eyes, uh, with my eye upon you. Be not like a horse or a mule without understanding, which must be curbed with bit and bridle, or it will not stay near you. Many of the sorrows of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds me, surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord. Straight away here we have that reminder that God is our hiding place and wants to keep us from trouble. All we have to do is keep trusting in the Lord and have, and we have that reminder in verse 10. And that tells us when we do that, we are then generously surrounded by the steadfast love of Christ. And like, how amazing is that? So maybe we should consider these pools of water off to the side, not as a hiding place. Maybe we should trust God the great I am, the one who is all-powerful, all-knowing, the one who loves us and protects us and provides us peace and comfort. Maybe these pools of water aren't where we go to hide, because when you're in the free flow of the Holy Spirit, there is no hiding, there is no disappearing, because the power is going to keep pushing you forward, despite whether you think you're worth it, despite whether you think you can, or whatever weaknesses you think that's holding you back. God. I'm so sorry. This is a setting on here that we're going to control over. God is going to use you. And God's going to keep using you despite whatever goes on. So maybe these pools of quiet waters are provided by God, lead and where He leads us to find refuge instead of us using them to think we can hide. In Psalm 23, 2, it says, He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. The imagery of water here symbolises tranquility and peace, somewhere where we can go for restoration. And so when God leads us to these quiet waters, we can and should spend time intentionally being quiet in God's presence, allowing that peace to watch over us. 
The peace that surpasses all our understanding. The peace that calms our anxious hearts. Taking in the time of rest and allowing God to give us that restoration. It made me think of the song called Quiet, and I'm not sure if many of you would have heard of it, but it's definitely been a song that's resonated with me. Um, and in particular, these lyrics came to mind, where it goes, I'll just be quiet, I'll let you speak through the silence. Here I am, no more hiding, you are in this moment. I won't fight it, I'll be quiet. I don't need to know what comes next. Tomorrow's in your hands. I can trust you with my future, because you're already there. I hear your voice call me forward, and I know I'm not alone. I'm just going to read them again. I'll just be quiet and let you speak through the silence. Here I am, no more hiding. You are in this moment. I won't fight it. I'll be quiet. I don't need to know what comes next. Tomorrow's in your hands. I can trust you with my future because you're already there. I hear your voice call me forward and I know I'm not alone. And I think it's a no more hiding, I won't fight it, I'll be quiet, is what's important for us to realise and take on board. When we are in the free flow of the Holy Spirit, we can't hide. We need to give over that control and stop fighting it. Because as the lyrics go on and say, we don't need to know what comes next. Because tomorrow and every day after that and every moment in between is in God's hands. And not only that, he doesn't need us to figure it out alone either. So we don't fight it, we just be quiet. And now I know that's a lot easier said than done, right? <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> and maybe you're sat here and you do think, oh yeah, no more hiding, let's go for it. Like, let's just jump in with your free flow. But I feel like a lot of you are sat there going, well, it's all right for other people to say. It's all right. And I believe it to be true for them, but not for me. And somehow it doesn't apply to you. And maybe you think you're not worth it. Maybe you're not you don't feel free, like, think you can be free flowing in the Holy Spirit. But as Ruth and Todd said earlier, we need to buy in this lie because it's from the enemy. It's not what God wants. And it does apply to you. And I don't just say that to everyone else. Like, I'm saying that to myself too when I say it. Um, but I don't know about you. I don't want to hide anymore. I don't want, like, I want to be in that free flow of the Holy Spirit. And I wanted to share with you the moment of realisation and, like, comprehending that and declaring that at the top of the falls on a rock. So, at the top of the falls where the big, that last video was taken was this rock, which it's a little rock, and it's slightly terrifying looking at it now, realising how close to the edge. It's it, actually I'm not as close as it looks, yeah, it's, it's raised up. <laughs> but she it, was at a safe distance, it's okay. <laughs> although I did stand on there very cautiously because I did feel like I could be sucked in, like we <laughs> said, like any moment. But um, when we got to the top and there was a rock there, Ruth basically said something along the lines of, Oh look, this rock is perfectly placed for us to stand and declare yes to the free flow of the Holy Spirit. And she put her arms out and she yelled it. And I was just a little wide-eyed and a little in awe at the same time, completely terrified, thinking, yeah, wow. I'm so glad she could just say that and do that. That is like absolutely terrifying, but so true. And I think part of that was because up until um, encounter and going to encounter it. I didn't really have much knowledge or understanding of what, of who the Holy Spirit was, what role the Holy Spirit had to play. And so I feel like as I've been going to encounter more, I've like come to understand it a bit more and it's become less of this avoided thing that in circles I've mixed in before no one really talked about. Um, and so 
get, getting a knowledge and understanding has been great. And when we were in Uganda, God showed me how the Holy Spirit really is in me and I can actually do the things that um, the Holy Spirit says to do and I do actually hear from God. And that I'm more capable than I realise and that he does actually use me um, despite what I think. And so when we got to the falls, it was like what I'd been experiencing was then visual for me to see that. And so like I knew I had to stand on the rock and put my arms out and say these things. Say that I was in the free flow of the Holy Spirit and that's what I wanted for my life. But I was terrified. And I just stood there going, go on, you can do it. You can do it. You're going to do it. And I don't know how long we were up there until someone got this picture because I was there for a while but I think it's because I knew that when I said it I was going to make this intentional commitment and I think the word that when I say intentional is important because I could have easily just done it in the moment got the photograph not that I knew it was being taken but got the photograph <laughs> felt good about it and then come home from Uganda and just gone back to normal and in some areas of my life, if I'm honest, I've totally done that. I haven't fully surrendered everything. And I've picked it back up because, you know, it's a bit easier. But I think what I realise now is by being in the free throw of the Holy Spirit, when I realise that's what I'm doing, I have a choice in surrendering that back to God and being completely interested in the Holy Spirit to have that way in my life and so when I stood there and said Holy Spirit have your way I want to be be in your free flow I want to do it your way it was a terrifying thing to declare because look right now I'm stood up here <laughs> having to do this <laughs> something I thought I would never do I said would never happen in a million years well I was wrong but I think it's because I have to choose to give up that control that I so desperately want to hold on to. Because like many people, I've got control issues and I want control over my life. But that's what's holding me back. And it's not what it's all geared up to be. And I've got to learn, and I'm learning to let go of that fear. And I can say all of this like it's easy, but it certainly isn't especially when we try and do it by ourselves. Mm -hmm. But with God, all things are possible. And we're reminded that of Ma in Matthew 19, 26, where it says, but Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. And so as I also said in Uganda, I'm choosing, and it's choosing faith over fear. Because actually the fear comes from not knowing what's coming. It's not knowing what to expect and not being able to control it. But when we take ourselves out of it, when we take up out of looking at our own capabilities and allowing our insecurities to run the roots, we see that God's way is better. And in John 7, 38, it says, Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Here the Holy Spirit is symbolised and we can engage the sense of this continuous life-giving presence of God within us, renewing us and providing that inner peace, which is a bit like the constant flow of a waterfall, but it reaffirms that God has it in control. And so God's way is more free. And what the Holy Spirit has in store for us is way more exciting and fulfilling and provides that true joy that we and the world cannot provide ourselves. And so I just wanted to encourage anyone who doesn't feel they're in the free flow of the Holy Spirit yet, that they too can say yes. You don't need a magnificent waterfall and a rock to stand on, because these are just symbols and metaphors. And I mean, if it helps, you can picture yourself on the rock with your arms up, and you can even do it if you want to. But you can say yes to the free flow of the Holy Spirit regardless, and you can come out of that hiding place. So I'll ask you the same question that Ruth asked you. Are you free flowing with the Holy Spirit? Are you going to say, Holy Spirit, I want it your way? I think 
effects has perfectly summed it up, so I'm not going to say anything else. We're going to turn this off.